As we enter the fall and winter season, some healthcare experts are concerned about a twin demic flu and COVID. Hospitals reach capacity nearly every year during flu season at some point. So, what happens if that coincides with a spike in COVID cases? Pending site, Stephanie Harris found out what our local hospitals have done to prepare. Stephanie? Tom Anita, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. That's pretty much where we are right now. Doctors have learned a lot since the spring, and there are reasons to be hopeful. But as we've learned over the last eight months, you just never know what's going to happen. Imagine the perfect storm, COVID-19 and influenza cases surging at the same time. We think we're as prepared as we can be. We checked in with the region's largest health care system, Centera and Riverside, as well as the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association to find out just what they've done. We did uh, initiate uh, multiple action plans for capacity. There are 3,500 inpatient beds available across the Commonwealth and nearly 3,700 added by executive order of the governor. So 7,000 beds at the ready. And what people should know and have confidence in is that here in the Commonwealth, health care providers and our partners in state government plan for these kinds of scenarios. Since the spring, they've stockpiled PPE. Not enough. Um, to, to do the one use that was kind of the standard before the pandemic, but definitely enough that we can utilize it safely. Because they learned to troubleshoot, hospitals are now decontaminating PPE. Tents are at the ready for triaging or separating COVID and non-COVID patients. And Hampton Roads hospital systems are all on the same team. And you can be friendly competitors uh, on an, in an ordinary time, but it's a very important in, in extraordinary times like this to be collaborative and work together. And so we've shared information. We know at any given time where the resources lie. And while Virginia has never reached the level of straining our health care system. You're starting to see that in the Midwest right now. So you see the, the upsurge in cases in Wisconsin and, and in Ohio, and that's the real worry. So they're preparing for the worst, but still hoping for the best. We haven't talked about as much, but we have been speaking about early in the uh, COVID pandemic, you know, flattening the curve. And, you know, with continued hand washing, continued social distancing, continued masking, we're seeing that. They've also learned a lot about how to treat the virus. Mortality is down 75% compared to March. You go back to March, and everyone in March was being admitted to the intensive care units, being put on ventilators, and it turns out medically that was the wrong thing to do. We didn't understand that back then. Dr. Dacey says they now have new drugs and steroid treatments, and most patients don't need to be hospitalized at all. Somewhere between 15 and 20 percent are admitted. But people are getting tired of the masks and social distancing, and the holidays are coming up. Doctors worry a packed house at Christmas could translate to a packed hospital. We will um, hit capacity um, for flu season. Uh, generally, February, March, we'll have uh, times where the hospital is full. But because of all the masking, hand washing, and social distancing, we could have a very mild flu season. A recent statewide poll showed more Virginians plan to get a flu shot this year because of COVID. So I think people are taking this seriously. And that could go a long way in preventing another shutdown of elective surgeries or banning visitors in hospitals, something no one wants to see. Because that's very hard on both families and on, and on patients, particularly in our nursing homes. It will depend, they say, on how we all behave. By the way, it is possible to get both the flu and COVID at the same time. One attacks the cardiovascular, the other attacks the respiratory system. Doctors say that is something to consider when you're deciding whether to wear a mask or get a flu shot. Stephanie Harris, 10 on your side.